Hi, Jeffrey Funk here, a uh, longtime blacksmith in Big Fork, Montana. Among the things that I've done over the years is built a whole family of power hammers, and this is the most recent incarnation. This is a 65 pound prototype hammer that's a single blow machine, runs on air, compressed air, but it's unique in that all of the valving is electric, and there's no moving parts, everything's electronic except the ram and the piston itself and the treble. So it turns on electrically. There's a 20, 24 volt um, uh, converter in there. And then I put on a little air and I come up. It's at 90 pounds right now. You notice the ramp came up to a certain point and stopped. If I wanted to have a longer stroke, I can move the ramp up higher. Um, one of the things that is important about the single blow hammer is the ability to have interchangeable dies or bolsters here. This is just a flat anvil for general purposes such as punching holes. There's an over center device and dovetail tracks so I can pull this out which exposes a two and a half inch hole that will allow large drifts to go through. This is another bolster that is for drifting out slot punched holes. And for ones where I have just small bolsters that need to go to and from the anvil, I can just put it over the hole. With the long stroke, I'm able to use drifts. So I can hold the drift, I would hold it with tongs if I was working, and the drift can go all the way through. It uses a conventional treadle, but each time you treadle it, it controls one blow. The strength of the blow is determined by the length of the stroke, the pressure at the gauge, and the duration of the depression of the, of the treadle. So if I push it really quickly, I get a lighter blow. But most of the control is by the, strength, the stroke. So I'm going to put back in this bolster. The machine operates a lot better with iron, hot iron in it. I'm going to put a little piece of rubber here to demonstrate the length of stroke. So right now, it's going to bang. It goes almost all the way up. But I can put it down, I can hold it down, I can move this. Now it only goes up part way. I can actually go even lower. And if I do a short duration, you see it won't hit all the way. If I go all the way, it hits all the way. Rubber is no substitute for hot iron. Let's do some of that. taken a plug, the holes punched all the way through. That's 1 and 5 eighths inch square, 4140.
saves a lot of effort. I'm going to pop it off and throw it from the other side now. So you can see, this is what it looks like. So second heat on drifting, coming from the other side. Drifted, ready to accept the actual eye drift. All right, now the following drift. Get it started here. another time. So one heat to punch, four heats to drift. So at the core of any power hammer is the ability to have control. Power when you want it, finesse when you want it. Here I'm able to control the length of the stroke by moving this sensor which tells the, tells the valve where the ram is. So if you watch this, if I move this up, the ram will follow it. If I move it down, it will not follow it, so I have to strike a blow to get, to get it down where I want it. I've also adjusted the pressure from 90 pounds down to about 65 because the veining does not need that kind of power. I was forging punching and drifting 4140, which is very tough stuff. This is regular steel, and I'm using an edge tool, so it needs to be tender. So if I set the machine right, I should have very short blows. Well, a little too short here. Right there is where I want to have it. And I'll tell you honestly, I don't even need that this much power. Straighten it out a little bit. Let it cool off a little bit, and then I can forge it a little You can 
adjust it just right and look at the veins. Looks like you need to go a little deeper here. I can just go ahead and do that with a little blow. 